But tonight... In the final months of the Barack Obama administration, the U.S. government announced that it would allow 110,000 refugees to settle in the United States in 2017. Organizations such as Lutheran Family Services, a partner with the United Methodist Church in these efforts, started to coordinate efforts to assist newcomers. Then, one week after the inauguration of President Donald Trump, an executive order focused on refugee resettlement reduced the number of refugees to be welcomed by more than half. This smaller number eliminated funding, and Lutheran Family Services had to lay off 15 of its refugee resettlement employees. It was a very chaotic time, to say the least. I think people remember on the news and people going to the airports, lots of rallies and candlelight vigils. Um, but it impacted refugee resettlement nationally. Uh, they, there were many offices across the country that had to shut their doors because um, without refugees arriving, they aren't able to stay open. One unconventional family in Omaha gained an appreciation for the lives of refugees, and their experience motivated them to give something back. Two retired United Methodists from First UMC in Omaha welcomed a Muslim Afghan American teenager, Lima, into their home in 2012 when her mother died from pancreatic cancer. Donna and Coiner Smith didn't know at the time that their relationship with Lima would produce another rewarding chapter in life. Recently, the Smiths decided to donate a sizable and undisclosed amount of money to the Omaha nonprofit, enough to keep the endangered refugee resettlement program open for at least one more year. Several years ago, a couple years ago, then rather than donate a lot after we died, we would like to make a donation, a significant donation, while we were still living it, to see the results of it. And uh, so we were kind of sitting there waiting for the opportunity when along came the Lutheran Family Services. The Smiths say they made the donation for Lima and for her mother, and because of what they have learned since their lives crossed paths. You just want to go in and do what you can do to help, and it's a very unusual circumstance. And, um, and for a 16-year-old to even have the concept that her mother wasn't going to be here anymore was just how can you deal with that? Donna found herself among a group of United Methodist women helping care for Lima's mother. Donna sat with Lima's mother in the hospital and learned from her about her teenage daughter. The Smith's unconditional commitment provided an example of Christ in the world today. My life still managed to maintain some semblance of normality through all of it. Um, and a lot of that was through Donna and Coiner. And so I think that part of the reason their relationship grew was they, whether consciously or not, did a very good job of gradually sort of like handing off responsibilities to each other so that it was less traumatic of a change. And so it like was a very natural progression for me. Lima's mother was not a refugee. Indeed, she had fled from Afghanistan in the 1980s and eventually immigrated to the United States and became a citizen after a successful career as a doctor in Afghanistan and later as a head doctor at a refugee camp in Pakistan. These people are not terrorists. They're our families, their mothers, their granddaughters, their children. They're, they're the sick. Uh, they need support. When you see the boatloads of them still coming from locations from Africa, from Asia, we need support for refugees. Though Lima was not a refugee, her mother's desire for her daughter to find a better life in the United States inspired the Smiths. Perhaps it inspires you too. Tonight's offering will go to Refugee Relocation Services to help welcome the strangers among us and to show the love of Christ in the world today.